In the last two videos, you learned to think about the structure of language using logic. I introduced using symbols for constants and variables, and how to break statements into subject and predicate. It's time to look at some logical symbols that will give our sentences a bit more structure. Starting with quantifiers. When we talk about a quantity, we mean how many of something there are. But ordinary language is fairly general, even vague in its treatment of quantity. One house, two or more houses. This is actually true of logic, too. We'll look at three basic quantities. None, some, which is one or more, and all. Each of these quantities is a symbol, so we will have three symbols that we can call quantifiers. First, here's the quantifier all. Remember when we used predicates with variables? We ended up with sentences like x is a person. But this doesn't tell us anything about that x. Let's use x as a quantifier. For any x, x is a person. Let's try that with the sentence x saw y. We get for any x, x saw y. One step further with for any x, for any y, x saw y. When I use any with these variables, I'm really referring to all the things x and y can stand for. So let's throw the universal quantifier all into the mix. We get the sentence for all x, x is a person. In ordinary language, you can read that as all of them are people, or just all people, or all humans. Let's look at another one. For all x, Jill saw x. Here we're basically saying Jill saw everything. But if we abandoned these quantifiers and just left the predicate, we'd end up with blank is a person, and Jill saw blank. Okay, let's move to another symbol. This one is the existential quantifier. It acts like the universal quantifier all you just learned about, but instead it means some, or more specifically, there exists at least one. Let's go back to our variable x in the phrase x is a person. Let's say we wanted to talk about some person, in other words, for some x where x is a person. We'll need to use an existential quantifier. We'll also need to use it for the sentence Jill saw something. Remember that Jill saw everything used the universal quantifier all, but for Jill saw something, we'll use the quantifier sum. Our final quantifier is the symbol no. Take a statement P. This P might represent John saw the movie or my house is red. Then the negation of that statement, not P, would have the same form as John didn't see the movie or my house isn't red. I'm listing two ways of writing the not symbol, but both have the same meaning. Take another statement, this time with an individual constant and a predicate. As you saw in the last lesson, you can write John saw the movie this way. Now let's turn the sta same statement into a negative, John didn't see the movie. See how that works? Same goes for my house isn't red. That's how a predicate is negated. Same applies to, the, to predicates with variables, x isn't a person, x didn't see y. But don't forget that you learn to quantify your variables with all and some. Take examples with a variable like some person, which I wrote as there exists at least one x where x is a person, and all people, or for all x, x is a person. We can actually negate both of these. Think about it for a moment. If we negate this some x, what does it mean? Not for some x, x is a person. That's no people, or no person. If we negate this universal quantifier over here, what does that mean? Not all x, where x is a person. Consider the difference. If there is not some x, then there is no x. If there is not all x, we're still left with some x. Take another example to be clear on this. Something is a turtle versus everything is a turtle. If I negate the first one, I get nothing is a turtle. If I negate the second one, I get not everything is a turtle. Before you take quantifiers and run with them, consider how we've been using variables with quantifiers. Instead of translating all languages this way, we'll say for all x, x is a language. Same way with the existential quantifier. The logic for some fish is given some x, x is a fish. This is how you'll use predicates and variables to lay out logical sentences. Let's look at how to render more general terms in logic. When we have words like someone, somewhere, something, and the like, the existential quantifier comes into play. Someone is for some x, x is human. 
something is for some x, or if you're trying to bring out its thingness, given some x, x is a thing. With that in mind, what's everybody and everything in logic? Take a moment to think about it. Okay, if your answers use the universal quantifier, congratulations. If not, don't despair. There are many more examples to come. This gives you some perspective on the scope of a quantifier. Variables of a predicate are bound by a quantifier to their left, the nearest applicable quantifier to be precise. X is bound by a quantifier on X, Y by a quantifier on Y. In the proposition for all X, X sees Y, X is bound by the universal quantifier, but Y is free. On the other hand, both X and Y are bound in for all X, there exists some Y where X sees Y. Notice that the predicate x sees y falls within the scope of these quantifiers. The variables x and y are also bound in the following cases. For x, x is red, and given y, x sees y. In that second example, y is bound, but x is free. Why would you want to bind variables? This is crucial to your logic. Picture it this way. The variable is like a blank space. John saw blank. If you bind the variable, you can form a sentence in a language. John saw something. Otherwise, you are leaving the blank space there. Binding requires more work, but it's crucial to logical thinking and modeling real sentences and logic. Now let's get to some translations before we bring this lesson to a close. Do your best to come up with the following in logic. And there you have it. Next time we'll take a look at logical operators, which will add some flesh to the bones of your logic skills.